Welcome to another episode of Santa Barbara Arts TV. We are joined today by writer and director Ashish Pant for his upcoming documentary film, The Knot. Ashish, welcome, congratulations, incredible film. How are you feeling post this incredible film? Well, uh, it's, it's a real privilege to get to talk to you about it. And I'm really grateful that you're taking the time out. Uh, and, and more importantly, you took the time to watch it. <laughs> um, you know, it's a great opportunity to be uh, amongst the films to be shown here at Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Very excited about that for the film to be able to travel to the United States and for people to get to see it, particularly because half my home is the US and half is India. So it's really great that people, I can share this with people in the US. And I thank uh, SBIFF to give me the opportunity to do so. It's just an incredible film. Let's talk a little bit about the film, Ashish, because it's a foreign film. And let's yeah. briefly give us a synopsis, if you could, about a, a teaser for the viewers at home. What is The Knot about? Okay. So uh, The Knot is a film that's set in the North Indian city of Lucknow, mm -hmm. uh, which is the capital of the largest state in India called Uttar Pradesh. But it's not um, uh, the place that's widely photographed by Bollywood, which is a big industry in itself. Uh, the Knot is uh, set in this uh, city and it's a story about a upper middle class couple that one night has an accident. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the, in the context of, um, of the country, they think they do enough uh, mm -hmm. to take care of things, uh, but clearly not enough. And it comes back to affect mm -hmm. uh, their own relationship in mm -hmm. a way. Um, and so it's really trying to sort of understand how uh, the actions that we take, you know, between and the barriers that we erect between ourselves and the society, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, can't be stopped at the doorstep. Mm -hmm. They can infiltrate our closest relationship. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we can't stay divorced from society at large. And that's, that's really the issues of class structure uh, that, that, the, that the film deals with. It's an incredible film, Ashish. And I know I was reading the press kit. It actually incepted the film was your family. The inception of the film was your family. Can you talk a little bit about how the film began? Because you have a very personal story that relates it to the inception of the film. Sure. So, um, you know, I was seven years old and I still remember that one afternoon, my family, my father was driving us in his car to uh, go for lunch to my grandmother's place in Lucknow. And the, we were at this uh, sort of uh, at the traffic light and the uh, light turned green and my father started the car and a scooter came flying from the other side and, and, and sort of collided with the car. And I remember within seconds, we had, you know, tens of people just banging on the car's windows, asking her to, us to come out. And as a seven year old, that was a very terrifying experience for me. And um, my father said, you know, lock the door, stay inside. And he stepped out to talk to people. And in that instance, you know, that image sort of got seared into my brain. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, as I've lived in the US over the last several years, you know, every time I've gone back uh, to India, this realization that we have such a, a society that is so divided in terms of uh, the income disparity and class disparities, that there is a deep sort of mistrust that has seeped into the society. And we always try to protect ourselves, et cetera. Anyway, it stayed with me. And, and many years back, I, um, I used to be, at, I was at Columbia uh, at doing my MFA and I started writing this script. Mm -hmm. And my mentor, screenwriting mentor, Steve Moulton, you know, came to me and said, you know, there's something very personal in here. Don't give it up, persevere. And I just kept working at it. Mm -hmm. And so that image became a point of departure for me to imagine this story. It was very strange because nobody talked to me about what had happened then because I was just seven. But mm -hmm. I could sense that there was a palpable tension in our family for the next few years. Mm -hmm. So after I'd written a few, a few drafts of the script, one day I sat my father down and said, what had really happened? There was that accident when I was a kid. And and, and then he told me about it, you know, how it had been difficult and there was a lawsuit. Finally, he was exonerated because they had a recording and 
they realized that he was on the right, but it was a lot of pressure for the family. But I think these things somehow get lodged inside of you, especially when they happen to you in childhood. And you just have, as an artist, you try to sort of talk about them. And, and, and that image really became the point of departure of my rendering of what could have happened. Mm -hmm. Incredible. And so now let us briefly converse, Ashish, about how the process actually began for you, because you were actually selected. This was a film that was selected. Can you talk a little bit about that selection process and how the film really came to be, please? Sure. So, you know, uh, it's very hard to make independent films in India because we have a very big industry, which is Bollywood, but it has a very specific sort of approach and kind of film they want to do and so for independent filmmakers while it's the industry is growing it's still very limited and i've got to thank uh, nfdc which is national film development corporation which is the apex uh, government body mm -hmm. uh, for film development in the country that every year they organize a co-production market mm -hmm. in india mm -hmm. for all south asian films from across south asia it's the largest co-production market for south asian film and one of the largest co-production markets in the world and mm -hmm. so with the not script i applied to get selected into the market mm -hmm. and i think they selected about 17 scripts from the region and uh, not script was one of them mm -hmm. and it's a fantastic uh, forum because you know i could go there and they gave me an opportunity to pitch the project to about 300 plus film executives and producers from across the world mm -hmm. uh, that all aggregate their people who are interested in uh, South Asian cinema. And, uh, and it was there that I met my producer, Karthike Narayan Singh, whose previous work I had seen and admired. Karthike is one of the few producers really working in art house cinema mm -hmm. in India. And I literally approached him with the script and said, you know, uh, please read it. You're the one I really want to work with. And he said, you know, I just work with three directors and I really am not looking to do. He was there with the film he had made uh, with another director. Finally, I think I pestered him enough. I was like that fly that didn't go away. And, you know, he just thought I'll read the script. So he goes away. And I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, and then he read the script. I still didn't go away. <laughs> and, and so finally, some, somehow, I think, I think my perseverance bothered him enough that he decided to come on board. Uh, one of my mentors uh, in the U.S. who's a filmmaker himself, uh, Christopher Zala, uh, was one of the first people who read the script and said, this is a movie, you must pursue it and I'll help you make it. Mm -hmm. So it was it was a kindness of a lot of people and faith in the script mm -hmm. that we were actually able to raise the financing and make the film. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the film, once we'd done the rough cut, it got selected for Work in Progress Lab, mm -hmm. which is a fantastic opportunity. They select five films uh, from across India, and they give us an opportunity to work with an established editor, someone we couldn't afford with our budget. And, and so that was a great mentorship and it made us look at the film in a different way and how it could be edited together. So yeah, it was a, it was a lot of very good people and people who really uh, believed in the project really coming together and making it happen. Incredible. And I'm not sure if I read this correctly or not, Ashish, but did it go to the Cannes Film Festival or what yeah. was it? So what happens is every year uh, uh, Cannes uh, invites about 20 work in progress projects. So mm -hmm. it's, it's projects that are still not completed, but have done a cut uh, at an advanced stage of editing. Mm -hmm. And so they gave an opportunity to get five films from India last year. And uh, we were selected at one of the five films at the Cannes Film Festival in the Goes to Cannes section. So these are films that are basically still not fully edited, but they want to give us an opportunity to meet sales agents and for people to get an early look at the film. And, and, and so we, uh, an Italian sales agent called you with sales, media sales saw the film, liked it. So they've come on board as the global sales agent for the film. And uh, yeah. Let us talk a little bit about the production side of things, Ashish, because it's just incredible. Cinematography speaking is just unbelievable. It, it's, it's very visually appealing. Share with us a little bit about that particular process. Did you shoot in India and what kind of cinema style were you going for? Because it feels extremely lifelike in my opinion. Well, yeah, can you talk a little bit about that please? Sure. You know, I was very fortunate to uh, uh, find in Pavel, uh, uh, you know, a cinematographer 
who's a Polish cinematographer. We have never, we had never met. Mm -hmm. It was actually just, it's a really funny story. You know, I started trying to approach cinematographers to get their reels. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I was watching a, a reel of one of the Indian cinematographers on YouTube mm -hmm. and my son, uh, you know, started crying in the kitchen. Something happened and I, you know, like any father, I just ran. And the and I think I the clip kept playing. And when I returned to the desktop, uh, there was another clip playing. And I just saw it and I said, "This is incredible. This is exactly sort of sort of the thing. You know, it sort of matches what I was thinking about for the film. But but it was some some strange Polish cinematographer's film a uh, real playing. You know how it's on loop on YouTube. Yeah. That next thing starts playing. So just <laughs> somehow I saved that link. Mm -hmm. And then when we were about six months away from the shoot, my producer, Karthike, was like, we need to really hire a cinematographer now. Mm -hmm. And I just went back. I saved this link. I went back, played it. And I was like, yes, this is it. And I literally called Emil Pavel, who was in uh, Poland. And I said, look, I'm a filmmaker, Indian filmmaker living in New York. Uh, is there a, you know, I want to talk to you about this. And he said, great, I'll read the script and sent him the script. He liked it. And so we started working and and rest is, you know, Pavel was just fantastic. He really, uh, you know, we really worked very hard for about six months on the look of the film, on the way we were going to shoot it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the approach was, as you said, I mean, the approach was to uh, employ long takes and mm -hmm. sort of really think about usage of time, mm -hmm. you know, in cinema. And so, yeah, you, you know, you, you pick that up. And, uh, but yeah, I was very lucky to have found a partner in Pavel and they did a you know, great job um, he, he created a great sort of palette for the film. Were you affected at all by the pandemic, uh, Ashish, the coronavirus? No, uh, fortunately, we shot just before that. So we, uh, when the pandemic hit, we were in editing. So mm -hmm. luckily, uh, yeah, we, we escaped that mm -hmm. um, sort of situation, thankfully, yeah. Thank you. Now, the music is also something to really... Um, praise you about because the music is exceptional uh, share with us a little bit about that selection and how that what themes you you really were going for there please thank you so much for picking that up because you know i'm really grateful to uh, my uh, composer is um, so music has two elements there's obviously the background score mm -hmm. and there is the local music which is in the film mm -hmm. uh, which is very important narratively and you know i'd like to say it's interesting you're picking these things up but i'd like to say that there are a lot of things being a foreign language film that get lost in translation mm. and some of those things i've tried to point out in press kit but i understand so for instance there's a folk song mm -hmm. that runs through the film but based on who's listening to the folk song its rendition changes so it's on the maid's uh, ringtone on her phone but it's got disco beats to it. Mm. It's almost bastardized. And then, you know, but when the driver is listening, he's listening to the same folk song, but it's the more traditional. Mm. And then the husband sort of hums it, you know, in his mm. own way. And so, you know, I wanted to sort of, uh, 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 you know, establish how class structure in our society is steeped in every way. It's mm. how we speak. The language, again, what's lost in translation is everyone uses a different dialect based on their class. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's in every aspect of our society. Uh, the challenge was I wanted to, Lucknow is a place which is culturally very important in India, where I come from and where the film is shot. And it has very specific kinds of folk music, which I've presented. There are three different sort of uh, folk um, elements in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I wanted to do was match it with something that was with the Western music as background score because there is this clash of cultures now we are all seeing in, in developing countries, you know, where we have so much influence of the West, mm -hmm. but at the same time, we still have our local folk music. And so Luigi Porto, who's uh, my composer and sound designer, mm -hmm. who's a person I've known for a long time, he's a Italian uh, American composer. You know, mm -hmm. I said, the challenge here is how can we bring background score, which I wanted to be Western classical, uh, and collide that with the folk elements mm -hmm. of, and, and still it all hangs together, but it presents this sort of mashup our culture is in a way, you know, mm -hmm. and so he uh, composed, uh, you know, a beautiful sort of background score for the film, which was important. Uh, uh, and you he literally went through 50 compositions for us to arrive at this one. So he, he did a terrific job and I'm very, so, you know, grateful to him for, for, for his work. But 
yeah, I mean, music was very critical for me because of while it's used sparsely, I needed the music to really be able to sort of uh, work with the drama in the film without overpowering it. And I think Luigi was able to do that. It's just, once again, and congratulations, Ashish. Let us briefly talk about the title of the film because it's a very interesting, the word in, in, the, in, in Hindi or the dialect that is spoken there is Urja, Urja. Is that correct? Yeah. Uljan, 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 yeah. Which yeah. you translated as the not, but I have a feeling it means a little bit more than that. Could you talk a little bit about the title, please, Ashish? It's great, very perceptive of you. So, <laughs> you know, you're absolutely right. Uljan is such a hard word to find a corollary for in English because in Hindi, it means several things all at once. So Uljan could be about things that are knotted up like, you know, you say, I have to unravel this, right? There is uljhan. Uljhan means an existential anxiety. So when someone says, I don't understand it, but I'm feeling uljhan, you know, it's a feeling. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the film, you know, and, and it's about being in a sticky situation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in an uljhan, you know? Mm -hmm. So how do you find in English language, we have different words to express each of these emotions, but in Hindi, this loaded word, which I really liked because all those apply to the narrative. Mm -hmm. But I thought the closest I could get to was this knot because sometimes we say there's a knot in my stomach, you mm -hmm. know, like I feel knotted, like it's in my pit of my stomach, you know. And yeah. then we also talk about, hey, this is a knotted situation, you know, like like we are knots here and I don't know how we're going to get out of this. Mm -hmm. Or here is a knot, right? Like something has been tied. So in a way, even though it's slightly more literal in, in English, but mm -hmm. I felt like it could do the best possible, you know, try and replicate those multiple meanings of, mm -hmm. of the title. But, but you're right. I mean, that did take us a long, long time to be able to come up with. It's a fascinating concept. I love that concept of an existential anxiety. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense when you watch the film, and it's just a lot more than that. How does the theme of karma play into the film of, of the Nad Ujhan because it's, I feel that there's a, that element as well, the karma. Is that a theme? Is that present in the film? Very, very much so. And you might remember that when uh, Shirish uh, is having, he has that chat with the driver mm -hmm. and they talk about, you know, and, and he's almost provoking the driver to say, no matter what you do, you're never going to make it, you know, and aren't you sort of, and, and the driver says, well, maybe that's a result of my karma from past life. And one of the things I wanted to bring out was that it's interesting. Over the years, people have asked me, like, why in a place like India, which is so populous mm -hmm. and there's so much friction because of disparities, why is there no more, not more violence? You mm -hmm. know, why is there not more violence? I mean, literally, actually common day-to-day -day violence is, is, is very little in India considering the huge disparity we have. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that one of the reasons is sort of this philosophical idea that your state in life today is your own doing. It's your karmas from a past life. Mm -hmm. And so you can't blame people here. And if someone is doing well, that's their karma were good. And so what you want to do is lead a good life this life so that in the next life, you have a better lot, right? But what has happened over the years as, as, as we have got integrated with the world mm -hmm. and with the whole philosophy of instrumental rationality, uh, basically people's belief in this is withering away. They are not willing to accept it anymore. And I wanted to show that element in when they break into the house in the end, the two younger people, they don't believe in it. You know, he says, we can't do this. We, ha we have to return the money. We can't. And, and the younger people are like, no, what do you mean? They committed an act and they must pay for it. Mm -hmm. So there's already this generational tension that is now starting. And one of the reasons as a filmmaker, I want to make, make films like this that deal with these issues is because I want to tell the middle class, you know, which I belong to, that you can't ignore the world outside. You can't close the gate or get inside a car and build this bubble through which you move around, you know, in, in a society that's so deeply divided. Otherwise, the future could be quite violent and dark just because it hasn't happened. You know, the world's changing. Everybody can see people. Everybody has a phone in India now. There are 800 million cell phones. They can see 
the lives people are leading elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And that incites a certain philosophy. Why not me? Why am I suffering, right? And, and so I think those previous generations, previous ideas, I wanted to show that how between even Manoj and those younger people who come in, there's a big difference between what they believe is justice. And they don't believe in karmic justice. They believe in justice today and right now in the world. And if that becomes the issue, then we'll have a we'll have a tougher you know society to deal with unless we wake up and try to correct it right now ourselves. Say, look, we've got to deal with this. We can't just ignore it. Mm -hmm. That was really yes. But you're absolutely right. Those uh, aspects I wanted to show. You know, people's uh, how people are changing because we are no longer what we were like 25 years back. Ashish, congratulations, a round of applause on an incredible film, The Not Ujhan, Existential Anxiety. What, I love that uh, thought. Congratulations, last question, Ashish, where, um, where will, will, can we go see this film for us? I know it's screening at the Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Uh, where can we go for more information, please? So, uh, uh, you know, of course, we now have our social media handles ready, both on Instagram and Uljan, but uh, at the knot. Uh, but uh, the hope is, uh, you know, uh, that, I mean, we're really happy that it's at SBIFF and you can watch it. Uh, it'll be available virtually from April 1st to April 10th but there's a drive-in screening. I encourage you to go watch it on a bigger screen mm -hmm. at 1 p.m. on April 8th. So please, if you have time, you're in the region, uh, I'd love for you to watch it. Mm -hmm. And after that, what we are hoping is that we will make it available to, you know, it, it, it's, I hope it'll have a bit of a festival travel, but really I want people to get an opportunity to connect with it. And uh, we are hoping that one of the uh, streaming platforms would pick it up at, at one stage and so that we can really bring it out because I think it's, you know, I hope that it's a film that causes people to ask questions and think about things that are so relevant to us today. I think it will. Ashish, congratulations. Thank you for joining us here at Santa Barbara Arts TV and congratulations, Ashish. It's just been an incredible pleasure conversing with you. Armando, thanks so much for taking the chance to talk to us.